Steve Evans. It's been a while since we last had a chat. First of all, how have you been? I've been great. I'm looking for my staff. I can't find them. You know, they're all, they're all over the world. Um, that's been good. We've been working really hard um, behind the scenes, you know, both the evaluation and discussions with the, with the squad from last season. And of course, the opportunity and the creative opportunity to add to the group with uh, a number of players because we've got to have to make sure the squad is balanced and efficient. So I've been really good. I had a few days away with the boys and then a, a few days in the garden, not doing a lot. But then quickly, it's manager has to go to work. I don't understand when I hear people go away for three and four weeks. Which I understand understand the staff can, but players want to meet with managers and, and have a, a plan. It's amazing to think it's been two or three weeks since our last game of season, but the League Two season is still going on. And you're going to be at Wembley on Sunday, aren't you? On Wembley on Sunday. Um, and it's, you know, I think the league table, if, if you look at it, is what to, in my opinion, fairly. I think Leighton Orient champions, they've had a wonderful season. I was with Richie doing some um, television work at the weekend and real humble guy. And congratulations, of course, to the champions. But I think the rest of the table sort of mirrored out. We were second, Northampton, a wonderful team under John. I think arguably, I think they might have even been pre-season favourites. Um, but John's considering the distress of the season before, I think, done a wonderful job. But I'm really looking forward to Wembley, and more so because it's fourth v fifth. And if you look at the table at the end of the season, it's how everyone would imagine it, it could look. Obviously, Bradford are, are joint, but they stay in League Two, and Salford, you know, fell a little bit because I think it's a great model under Gary and Neville and the crew up there. I think it's really good, you know, Nicky and Giggsy and Roy Keane and the gang. I think it's, I think it's really good, but. You know, if you look at the two clubs, Stockport, they've been on a massive rise under under Dave. Um, incredible. Went all the way to penalties. And and of course Carlisle, I was I was buzzing for similar. So I'm really looking forward to it. There'll be a great crowd. Um, there'll be a passionate crowd for sure. And uh, and I'm very fortunate that um, I'll be able to stand or sit at Wembley and, and watch two teams battle for what is just a, a fantastic prize. And as much as we know you love Wembley. I bet you're glad you're not in the dugout on Sunday. Um, I think I'd be. I think I'd be glad in a minute if I was guaranteed to win, but there is no guarantees, is there? Um, if you if you look, you know there'll be many pundits over the next few days and over the weekend. They'll be saying Stockport. There'll be many pundits saying, "Oh, what the Carlisle? They've been fantastic." I think on current form, you can't split them. I think I've I've seen some really top end bits of performances within the two games from each of them. Um, I'm I'm just really excited and looking forward to it. And and listen, whether it's Dave or Simo won't really make no difference to me. But I think either club will, will more than grace League One, and um, it's just fantastic to see. And on the flip side, in League One, it's Sheffield Wednesday against Barnsley, and our team will be facing one of them next season. It's incredible, isn't it? It's incredible. I think you look at. You know, I don't hide it, my family, I've got an allegiance towards Peter, but you know, but who can who can take away the miracle, the football miracle? I was speaking to Darren Moore, called me yesterday and we had a good chat on the phone and of course I threw the flowers to him in the bookies and because it's, it's incredible, just an incredible what they achieved. i um, spoken to some players that played in that game and people like Barry Fry and the chairman of Peter Darren and the atmosphere created by the Wednesday fans was sensational, incredible. But then you look at this Barnes of the team, they've done the double over Wednesday this season. Uh, we've used their training facilities two or three times travelling off where the manager has, has been brilliant with us and um, two really good groups of players. I don't think it's as clean cut as a lot of people think. I think it's an interesting one. Big Bookie's favourite Sheffield Wednesday because of the comeback and Barnes they've beaten them twice and done the double. Psychologically, it's on a level for me, but two great clubs. And now just looking back at ourselves, we saw you, the staff and players all had a, a long weekend out in Spain and um, we saw plenty of photos. How was it? That was fantastic. The fitness testing went really well. Uh, Rena failed to show, Ravel failed to show. <laughs> um, no, the, the boys had a good time. You know, we, went out, we, we used it also to have some meetings to chat to the players, the good, the bad news, the indifferent news. Um, I think it went really well. We've we've let go of some really talented players, some real talented lads, some guys that have gone their extra inch for us in different weeks, numerous weeks of the season. They'll all they'll all go and sign for clubs and, and, and do well in their career. But to every one of them that's moved on, we genuinely wish them every success and 
to those they've kept, then they're they're already working to the to the fitness plan that's that should be kicking in from next week. So they'll be working to that, and then we'll very quickly be getting ready for new season and that and that's football. And the ones that we have kept, how important is it to keep that core group of players that got us up into League One? I think it was massive. I think you, you looked at the seasons that some of them had, you know. Um, you know, everyone can instantly say Carl Piagiani and Dan Sweeney, they've been absolutely tremendous. Uh, but I could go through the whole they could go through the whole squad. Some of these decisions to not take lads forward or take lads forward was really marginal. But but my job under a under a tough chairman, I have to say that, is he's a he's a tough taskmaster in and he'll want us to, to be competitive in League One. We understand we might still be 60-61 to win promotion mm-hmm. like we were last year, but our chairman will expect us to be diligent in our recruitment, myself and Leon, he'll expect us to get value for money to, to add selectively to the group. But the 10 or 11 lads that are, that are staying, they're the dressing room, they're the team that win promotion in large, and we're going to try and add to that We good players who we think can maybe give us something we've not had. And of course, we have to make sure we do our homework to get the characters the same because the dressing room last season, probably outside outside the second season at Rotherham when we went to the championship, was the best ever dressing room. Oh. And we've seen earlier that Josh March has re-signed for Steamage. Any movement on those other players that we're having discussions with? Yeah, we, we, you know, we've obviously had top the football side and... And Leon does the, the, the finance side with the, with the players' representatives, as, as, especially as we got to this level, and it's more so. Uh, but we're really close with some. You know, we've had some really good meetings. Um, we know exactly where we're working to the plan that we discussed with our leader last week, the chairman, when he was in, and we were discussing not just plans for the signings, but plans for the training ground, for travel, for everything. And it's, it's, it's a really exciting time to be the Stevenage manager. It's a really exciting time to be the the Stevenage supporters. I mean, more weeks than not, the Lamex will sell out next season. We'll be sold out. They'll be they'll be on the roofs in some of the games. And um, and we're very, very honoured to be there, but now we're there. We want to play a part. We don't we don't just want to be a, a spare part, we want to play a part. And just finally, a lot of people look at the football season and go, oh, summer must be the relaxing, there's nothing to do during the summer, but it is, it is the busiest period of your year, isn't it? Well, it is if you're Paul Rayner on a cruise. I don't know if you're on a Turkish Riviera. He played just somewhere in the cost of the soul, I suppose, we we his good lady and little boy. But um no, listen, I will got a break as well. We're not hiding from that. But I will um I will be walking all the way through that. We have to be ready, you know, and, and never forget that little saying that I said it many times last summer, is if we um if we fail to plan, then we plan to fail. That's great. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.